Looks like I'm live. All right. Good morning, everyone. Another live photography session. <laughs> Today I'm in a weird mood. I'm energetic and also exhausted. Uh, I feel like I'm starting to feel better because I wasn't feeling so well. Um, but I'm feeling better. Uh, today, while people file in, I'm going to share this guy, my Ansco Mark M. This is a rare rangefinder. It did not have mass appeal. It wasn't like a, didn't have a large production run. In fact, I think it had like less than 200,000 of them made. I'll hold it out so you can see it. Uh, I love quirky and unique cameras, especially rangefinders. There's something very, I'm going to say charismatic about rangefinders. Uh, they're just fun to use. They're different. They're uh, not always the best tool for the job, but when I shoot my film photography, I'm always looking for interesting experiences more than the actual results. So here's that camera. Let me know if you have piled in. Um, oddly, it's telling me I only have one concurrent viewer after it said I had six, so <laughs> I might be talking to myself at this point, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, the cool thing about the Ansco Mark M, um, what I love about it most is that it's styled unlike any other camera or rangefinder I've ever owned. Um, the story behind it, I'm not an expert, and there's always the person that goes on Google and then educates everyone in the comments, you know, as if, like, it's off the top of their head. Um, but I believe the story behind it is that it was produced for the American market, and so they kind of styled it off of American taste. And it being a camera off the top of my head, I think it was in the 60s, it has a lot of, like, 60s automobile styling, which I really love. I'm um, like, it looks like the grill of a, of a car. Um, this camera, more than any camera I have ever held in my entire life, feels more heavy and more industrial. Like, it is like a toaster made in the 50s. It is hard. The edges are sharp. It's got this, like, uh, I don't know what you would call it, sort of like a bezel. It, it's not like, so take my Vito too. And hello everyone, if you're just joining, I'm just talking about one, one of my cameras while everyone gets here, then we're gonna do some photography FAQ. I'm gonna go through you, uh, Google and answer some frequently asked questions, but here we go. Like this Vito too, while made of metal, except you know the like accordion part here, it doesn't feel like a, a solid chunk of steel. It's a well-made camera, don't get me wrong. But my Ansco mark, <laughs> it just feels like it is heavy. Like, this is a murder weapon. Like, it is like a brick. And that's overused. Things like, oh, it's a beast of a camera, it's a brick, etc. It's overused all the time. Um, even I will overuse it at times. But this camera really is, it's like made of all steel or something. Um, it only had three lenses, and the cool... Uh, I only own one. It's the one I bought it with. Um, and I think I paid maybe 20 to 30 bucks for this camera, and the quality of the lens is so good. I shouldn't even say it on YouTube, because I don't want people to know, you know? But um, people think, oh, you have to get a Leica, you have to get a this or a that to get a really high-quality lens. Um, a lot of vintage cameras had really, really good lenses, and this is one of them. Unfortunately, the rangefinder stopped, kind of decoupled, because I put my bag down a little too hard. And um, But now it seems to have recoupled, and I don't know if that's a thing. But I could probably still use it using scale, you know, just gauging my distance. Uh, I could do that too, um, because it does... It's, it's a weird camera, though, like... Um, it's a little bit weird, so it's kind of hard to, like do that but you can do it um, but the beauty of this lens is uh, when I shot it wide open it looked incredible like it had this quality it's a unique quality that I didn't find in any other camera so that is my Ansco Mark M and check this out i would never used it but it even has a light meter um, press that and that pops up batteryless light meter I don't know if it even works I've never even tried you know, I really don't use light meters in my film cameras. I think 
a lot of the fun is looking at an environment and then figuring out what you think the best exposure would be using your head, um, just using basic uh, Sunny 16 rule. Uh, the one odd thing about the camera, it comes with a plastic lens cap I still have. So the most like industrial heavy metal kind of camera I've ever owned and it, and it comes with a plastic lens cap. All right, so today we are going to answer some common frequently asked questions on photography. Uh, what I need from you guys, I need you to, to do me a favor, just tell me if uh, the screen is rendering properly because I, I changed a few settings. I, it looks like it's okay. Um, but I changed a few settings in Photoshop. Let's pull up the streaming studio. It looks right. Yeah. All right. So I think let's talk about common frequently asked questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some on Google. I'm going to look at my own on my website and then we'll see other photographers what they think. If you're just joining the, the live stream, please do me a favor, hit the like button, tell the algorithm this is worth watching and then maybe we'll get some more people joining us. If you're a professional photographer and you want to chime in, please do. I think it'd be interesting to get another perspective about, um, you know, just another perspective. So the first question we have, do event photographers, what do, and what came up was, what do event photographers charge? That's going to depend on the area and the photographer, their skill level, etc. But ultimately, you get what you can get. Uh, the idea, I've said this before, the idea that like the way to figure out what to charge is you itemize your time and then you add it up. I don't think that's a good way to do it because, I mean, it doesn't matter what you think you're worth. What matters is what you can get in the market. What I do is I charge a premium. I think I'm charging more than anyone in Los Angeles right now. Um, but I'm offering a lot more to compensate for it. And then I have figured out a way to offer some wiggle room so that if they can't pay my premium hourly rate, I can still leave a window open to work with them by reducing what I'm offering. So what I offer now at that rate is same day editing um, or even in my same day, usually I mean 20 within 24 hours, but even offering it on the job if it's a long enough job. So for example, if it's a one hour job, I guess I could still probably offer, I usually have a two hour minimum though, but what I'll do is I'll bring along an assistant and um, I pay them out of that 250, so it works out. So if they don't want same day editing, then I will be able to still work with them and bring my rate down to what the standard in LA is about, and it's about 200 for the top photographers if you like hit, if you guys actually go to Google and do like event photographer, Los Angeles, um, depending on where you're at, you know, there, there's people that are going to consistently rate in the top three. Um, I've had a really hard time. I'm going to do an episode on marketing and SEO. I've had a really hard time breaking above, like sometimes I'm like number two or even one, but like I usually end up at three. And it's only because I really just started working on my SEO like two years ago. And it took that long to get there because I only built my business on word of mouth for the most part. So it was a climb. It's really hard to do. You want to start putting your, uh, working on your SEO right away. All right, next we have how much do event photographers make? Okay, well, that's going to depend. I, I don't know the actual figure. Let's actually Google it and see what the internet says. Um, event photographer rates range from 150 to 250 per hour with two hour minimum, um, then around $100 per hour for every hour. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is really generalizing. Um, but that sounds about right. You got to remember if you're in New York or Los Angeles, you're probably going to be charging more because A, you can, B, you need to, you live in, a, an, ex in an expensive city. So I think it's going to vary. It's going to be a lot more than if you live in Ohio or if you're an event photographer in a small town where maybe you're making $25 an hour. It really depends. And usually when I'm speaking, I'm speaking for myself and I'm doing a lot of like corporate jobs, but I don't. It depends, you know. There's a lot of smaller events. I don't, I don't charge 250, and they're not going to need same day at editing either, like a kid's birthday party, that kind of thing. Um, if you're in the live, 
stream and you are a working photographer, let us know what you think uh, your aver the average rate is. I, I would love to hear that. Next, event photography prices, packages. Let's talk about pricing and packages. Uh, as an event photographer, I don't offer packages. I think packages is more of a wedding photography thing. It's usually an, a way to kind of not leave money on the table to get more out of a job you package in like an album and that kind of thing I've always gone my own way because I don't want to make a wedding <laughs> like when I shot weddings I didn't want to make a wedding album um, and I had that pressure to, that's one of the reasons I didn't like wedding photography as a new photographer I had the pressure to create things like wedding albums and I didn't enjoy that I like to shoot and scoot I like to shoot the job do the edit and be done but that's me um, there's gonna be a lot of advice if you want to just if you got into wedding or any type of photography to because you want to make money it's probably not the right fit for you because there's a lot of things you could make more money at but if you're doing it I would say that the reason what I think a lot I think a lot of people get into this because they love it a lot of people get into any type of photography because they don't want to work for someone and they want to do it on do it in their own way and if uh, so do it your own way you know that's how I think uh, at this point I'm getting a little bit older I'm not like I'm not a photographer starting out at 20 like 5 26 where I'm starting to think, to think about my future more so I do have to think more about the business side and make sure it's sustainable and make sure I have a retirement secured um, so that's where I'm at right now, but yeah, shoot and scoot, Al Alberto. Uh, if you're just joining us, please do like the video. It will le let YouTube know that this is worth watching and will get more people to join us. If, if you're an event photographer or any type of working photographer and you want to add to the conversation, please do in the comments. Uh, I want to help people, and I don't, I, I don't do this because I think I have the best opinion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I have my opinion, and having other opinions in the conversation would really help. Um, Alberto says he lives in Columbus, and those prices sound about right. Amon says hi. Amon, I think I keep forgetting to thank you um, every time I thank my Patreon subscribers uh, because I'm always doing it on the fly, and I'm, I'm have, I am I, I always have a hard time just quickly opening Patreon and finding my my supporter list, but um, I believe you you are my newest supporter, so thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Um, it feels you know the, even though like right now most people are doing the five dollar level, it makes me feel like appreciated. So I I really it means a lot to me. Um, okay, another FAQ. Let's see, let's try what do event photographers charge per hour? Every, it's all about money. <laughs> Every single thing that comes up is about money. What do event photographers cost? What do they charge? All right, let's try do event photographers. Uh, Gary says, Hi, Mick. Thank you for the live streams. They've been very helpful. I'm glad to hear that. Um, if they are helpful to you guys, um, please help spread the word. Make sure you like the video. Uh, if you know an aspiring event photographer, what this is probably the most important. Send my stream, send my channel to them because it's really hard to find working photographers on YouTube and it's it's just you know it's, it's not, I'm not making very easily searchable content. All right, so what do <clears throat> do event photographers? Oh my God, it still reverts to what they charge. It's all about money. <coughs> <coughs> oh my God, what do event photographers do? Okay, I had to go to like the fifth one. Um, I see you asked a question, Amon. I'll get to that after. What do event photographers do? Well, in my take, my perspective, and what I think I do is I'm there to capture the moments that really represent, like, defining moments. I want to represent the defining moments with my photography. I want to capture as much emotional moments as possible. Uh, I'm offering coverage 
I'm giving you a window to what it was like to be there if you weren't there. I'm creating marketing material. I'm creating images for your marketing if you're a brand. Uh, images are used in like 80 or something like 80% of all ads now and all Facebook posts. Like people need video and photos. Um, so that's what I do. I think the most base level when people think of what event photography is and why it's not very alluring is they think they're walking around with the camera and seeing groups of people and like, hey, can I get a shot of you guys? You know, and that's a small part of the job for many types of events. It depends on the event, of course, but that's part of it for sure. All right, questions. Um, do you think it's necessary to have two bodies covering the event? I've, I have been doing only with one. Okay, yes, I do, but I don't think it's necessary. I think you should, but I've said before, if you're just starting out, don't let someone on their high horse tell you you have no right to do this because you only have one camera. Odds are they started with one camera and then like they've completely detached from like their own beginnings. Like they completely have no recollection and somehow now they're on a high horse, you know? It's like it, it, it's like an adult yelling at a teenager for acting like a teenager, you know? They were a teenager once too. So yes, you do, you should have two bodies, mostly for a backup, you need redundancy. If you're doing small events, it's not as big of a deal, but it's still a big deal. Like if you're, you don't want to lose everything or have a camera break on you at someone's like, someone's child's first birthday party, that's bad. But mostly I use two bodies as a backup and maybe like 2% of the time I'm actually shooting with both. There's very specific circumstances I'll do that. <coughs> <coughs> um, I think you're talking about my video being too small, Gentatsu, and it doesn't need to be that small, you're right. Especially because I'm really just answering questions. Um, can I zoom into my web browser? Um, yeah, I could try that. If it will let me. Okay, hang on. I don't, I don't know if I know how, actually. <laughs> you tell me how to do it. I know you know how. Um, but in the meanwhile, you get to look at me. Now I'm bigger. Um, another question, <clears throat> sometimes you miss moments changing lenses, yeah, but what I do is uh, do a series of shots with one lens and then go for images which require a different lens. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand now that you meant the browser, I just don't know how um, on the fly, you know, when I'm doing this I'm like trying to fil I'm continue talking so you guys aren't listening to a blank video, you know. I'm, navigating the web browser I'm navigating the stream it gets a little control click thank you control plus or what do I press exactly and I'm on I'm on an, uh, a Mac so it's still control okay I think I that, is that the same as right click I'm going to get back to that one. Maybe it's transform. I'll get back to it. Um, so back to shooting with two bodies and not wanting to miss the shot because you have to change your lens. I've talked about how physical photography can be. Um, control and then plus. Um, and so I'm, I, I think about everything. I think about how I move. I think about how I can quickly change lenses. Uh, I'm... I think about how tense I am, how relaxed my muscles are. If you're really uh, stiff, you're not going to be able to do things quickly and fluidly. And so what I'm doing is I, I've thought about how I can quickly change lenses. You also, if you are incredibly present and experienced, I believe that you begin to get a sense for when a lens change is coming. You'll know when you're going to need to change your lens before you actually have to. And so I'll be able to quickly do that. Um, I also have worked on navigating crowds really well, so I can move really quickly without like running and charging. So I'll quickly, you know, zoom through a crowd, go to get to my camera bag, quickly make a lens change, go shoot. So that's how I handle it. Um, but without a doubt, 
<coughs> without a doubt, uh, you would not have to do deal with that if you had two camera bodies on you. You could also get like a camera sling type situation or have a um, a messenger bag. I converted a messenger bag into a camera bag by taking the padding from a camera bag and just converting it, moving it into it. <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> All right. Um, let's try the command. So let me find that. Command plus. I don't know, guys. It's not working. Uh, we have another question from S Steve Land. Flash on camera or light? Light sticking? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by light sticking. Are we talking about like an LED, like continuous light? Um, I don't know. I'll, uh, let me know. I'll get back to it. Let's take a look at an another question that comes up. Let's do event photography. I'll pull event photography FAQ. All right. I don't want to look at theirs. Interesting start with mine and then I'll see how it compares to other people's because I actually have an event photography on my on my website oh <laughs> um, I don't usually set up an external flash when I'm shooting like corporate events and that kind of thing um, I used to do it for weddings and stuff like that for the dance floor. Maybe I'd do like some external flash, but I, I don't do that too much anymore. <clears throat> I've definitely subscribed to a less is more approach now, but you can do it. You know, you can make interesting images. <clears throat> Hang on, guys. So right now we have my FAQ. So why should I hire a professional event photographer? So rather than re I'll like read I'll skim my own writing. Um, but basically it's about consistency. Uh, any any Joe Blow can get a great shot at an event, but when you're hiring an event photographer, you're hiring someone who a knows the job, b is consistent, so they're going to get consistent results. And uh, C, they're uh, going to act in a very professional manner. That's really important. You are a professional and y you can't be an amateur. And that's a lot of why you will be are hired and it's a lot of why you will be rehired. <laughs> yeah, I'm not dying of COVID, by the way, guys. In case you're worried, I actually got tested. I don't have COVID. I have a clean bill of health. Um, view on top menu, zoom or command. Yeah, but okay, let me, I'll try one more time. Zoom, top menu, view, I mean. Yeah, I'm just going to have to figure that one out later. Um, you guys can see me and I am going to read what's on the screen, so we should be okay. Um, does a photographer's skill matter? Yes, 100%. It's not just about grasping the technical aspects of photography. It's about knowing how your, how your camera sees. If you don't know the difference between how the human eye sees and the camera sees, you see a beautiful sunset, you're like, wow, that's so amazing. And then you take the photo and you look at the screen and then it's like, wah, wah. You know, it's like, oh. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> Why are images important to marketing? So on my website, I pull up a few figures. And also, you guys can follow along if you go to mcmillman.com. Um, but if you really want to help me out, 
what you can do is you can search for an event photographer in Los Angeles and don't click on anyone but my website. Only click on my website and spend some time on it and that will help me. Um, why are images important in marketing? Okay, still images in contemporary marketing are increasingly important. 80% of marketers use visuals in their social media marketing, while 32% of marketers say visual images are the most important form of content for their business. Visual, visuals are produced 60,000 times faster than text. I, I, I need to quote my source because it sounds like someone's just making that up because how do you, pro, how do you, actually, how do you actually quantify that? I don't know. Uh, what do you focus on? And this is for me. This is my FAQ. It goes without saying that details matter at an event. A lot of hard work, I need to change that. A lot of hard work is put into producing an event of any size and part of a photographer's job is to capture that. But a photographer's priority should be on capturing defining moments of an event that both tell a story and evoke a feeling. Every image I make is about something. And to elaborate on that, you always need to shoot with intention. You should be photographing. You should be seeing a moment, not just lifting the camera, taking a shot randomly. I've seen photographers do that where they walk around a room, they hit that corner, they raise the camera, they take a shot. They hit that corner, raise the camera, take a shot. Um, <coughs> uh, I see a lot of photographers do that. You should always shoot with intention. Everything, Every image you make should be meaningful. So... Everything should be about something, whether that be an emotion, reaction, or an interaction. There is always a meaning behind the photograph. I believe that images like these are what offer a window into what it was like to be there. And many times I've been told by a client, like, these images remind me exactly what that day was like. This captures exactly what I felt. And that is one of the greatest compliments you can get as a photographer, in my opinion. So what is your photographic style? So I do not believe in developing an arbitrary aesthetic style. Rather, I focus on capturing authentic emotion-filled moments and interactions. When hiring a professional photographer, you are selecting someone to make images that accurately represent your event and or brand. Therefore, my images are not overly stylized in post as they will have less latitude should you decide to have them further edited to match a visual style. Rather than providing overly stylized images, I focus on making images that effectively tell your story or document your event. This will give you more freedom in how you use and stylize, if necessary, the delivered images. <laughs> Thank you, Gentatsu. I appreciate it. <coughs> I'll put that toward my um, COVID-19 medical fund. <coughs> um, <laughs> let's see. It's hard to read this because I, I have a, I'm coughing. So, what is event photography? It can be a wide, it can be a wide category of professional photography. We often think of wedding and mitzvah photographers as their own genre of photography. So, typically, when we're, we are referring to event photography, we're talking about everything else, such as birthday parties, corporate events, conferences, red carpets, ceremonies, marketing events, etc. Um, but that said, wedding photography is event photography. Bar mitz shooting a bar mitzvah is an event. A, um, a quinceanera, sweet 16, those are all events. Uh, going out to a concert and then photographing, you're shooting an event. So if you want to build an event photography portfolio, as I've said before, you can also just shoot your daily life. It's an event. You can put it on your website if you're building a portfolio. You don't have to be the bona fide event photographer at an event to build a portfolio. Uh, what sort of events do you cover? So I, I'm not going to read it. I cover everything pretty much. If it's an event, I cover it. I get a. I, I have been trying to carve out my own niche in politics because I feel like a they pay my right. <laughs> um, B, I'm interested in politics, and C, I feel like I'm somehow having more of an impact, even if it's not a huge impact. I feel like my photography can feel more meaningful. Um, you know, it is just a job, but it 
that doesn't mean you can't get meaning from it. Uh, today I'm volunteering. I'm going to photograph one of those send-offs that they're, they're having at different hospitals where LAPD or you know, the fire department or a police department will basically do a send-off for the health care workers. And so I'm going to photograph that tonight. Um, do you back up images? The way I back up my images are on multiple hard drives. The online gallery I create for my clients is archived. That's not going anywhere. At any time, they can just click once, download all of the high-resolution files. I also make social media-sized files for clients as well um, for two reasons. A, providing as much service as possible. Um, that's really important, especially if you want to just charge a premium rate. Just You have to show why you charge that rate. Um, what was my other thought? I think I covered it. I missed something. Anyway. Um, oh, um, right. Social media. The other reason is that I don't want my files looking like crap. <laughs> if, if they're not resizing it and they're posting it straight to like Facebook, who has a terrible compression algorithm, your images won't look good. And so I will say, here is a social media sized gallery and I convert all of the files and then they don't have to go through the trouble. And that's a, an important service. Do you have liability insurance? Yeah, 100%. And um, mostly, it's uh, sometimes you have to pay to play. And having liability insurance will basically allow you to shoot at certain venues. If you don't have the insurance, um, some venues won't let you shoot there at all. They'll actually require proof of insurance. It comes in handy when you have all your gear stolen like I did. Uh, but when I had like $2,700 worth of gear stolen after my $500 deductible and all the depreciation, I only got like a thousand bucks back. Um, and I'm allowed to kind of dispute it. And I just, it was such a headache. I didn't do it. And I, I don't know if there's like a limitation. I might still be able to. Um, for example, they depreciated my Nikon F3, which I now don't have. And that camera hasn't gone down in value. It goes up. You know, so um, thank you, Aman. I really, really, really appreciate it. I don't know what that converts to, but I think it might be like six bucks. So thank you. <laughs> um, really appreciate it, guys. Oh, you can do like a little sticker. Gentatsu's has <laughs> coffee, which I'm drinking too much of. I'm coughing and dying because every morning I just start drinking a ton of coffee rather than having water. Not good. All right, do you provide videography services? Um, that's Yes, I do. Um, some thoughts on videography. It's going to become common that you, they will ask you if you do video. Uh, I don't get it asked that often. But more importantly, it is a business you're running and providing it can make you more money, even if you're just referring someone. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I have a few video guys and I, I keep a very small amount, you know, just um, it's more to offer an added service and I have to deal with the client. So I keep a, a tiny cut, but I'm mostly paying them their rate. Um, I'm giving most of what I charge for videography to my videographers. Um, and that way, and yeah, you're offering more service. And for me, it's more about that. Uh, do I personally do videography? very simple stuff for my own sake for youtube etc but i i i don't i only dabble i don't like i don't like the idea and don't think i will well i'm not gonna say never but i don't do the whole hybrid thing where i'm a videographer and a photographer because anytime you're splitting your focus you are going to you're not going to do either of them at a hundred percent is what i think and seeing in images Still images we're seeing in motion and video is very different. Composition, lighting, it's all the same. But when I'm shooting stills, I'm looking for moments. And it's about capturing that defining moment. Video is not, it, you're, you still want to capture moments, but it's a bit different. Um, Gentatsu, how often do you find yourself cropping photos or do you try to compose your images when you press the shutter and not crop? Yeah, I, I don't crop too much. Tiny tweaks or alternative crops. Sometimes I have an image that could work uh, horizontally and vertical. I'll duplicate it in Lightroom and then I will crop one. Um, it depends. I, I don't do a lot of cropping. It's probably like 
two percent of my images maybe which so yeah probably you know so maybe like there's a dozen out of a thousand or something like that i don't know um do you provide, got that, rates and services? Also, yeah, keep asking questions. If you're joining me now, please, if you're in, if you're, you enjoy this content, please give it a like. Let the algorithm know I'm offering something worth viewing. Um, how do you do marketing? I know you really have clients who come back to you. I guess you have talked about it before, but I still have some comments now. Uh, how I get clients to hire me. Um, which is more important, Facebook ads, Instagram, or website, or approaching uh, corporate corporations directly? Okay, that's a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to do an episode in which I'm going to talk about all of this in detail and focus on it. But I'm not going to brush off your questions. I'm going to answer them, but a little bit more briefly, and we can totally get into it more. Um, hopefully, I'll face Thursday. Um Hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to do this, but I want to kind of make sure I'm prepared for it, so I might do it first episode next week. But um, Facebook ads, I don't know. I, I, I got to talk about my own philosophy. My own philosophy is the best bang for the buck. Um, you don't need to charge a lot of – you don't need to spend a lot of money. Uh, I don't. I have not run enough ads to have good data on it. You know, people do it, so obviously it must work. Um, the strategy I've shifted toward in the last few years has been uh, search engine optimization, because I don't have to do anything if I'm ranking at like in, on the first page of Google. Anytime someone searches for a photographer, you're going to be right up there. Um, you know, the, the, it's cliche, but it, the second page on Google search is where web pages go to die. People rarely are clicking on the second page. So for me, a lot of my work that doesn't cost me any money but costs me a lot of time is to make sure I'm ranking on the first page. My initial strategy when I first started, especially because I worked more with like families and stuff like that and not big corporations, my initial um, way of getting a lot of work was Yelp but even but Yelp's gotten really really difficult as well what happens is you have like you, you really want to jump on the newest thing like uh, which is hard for someone like me who's like a dinosaur about stuff I don't like technology I understand technology like when I really want to learn it it's not hard but I pretend I, I don't get it <laughs> even though I do like I just pretend because I don't like I don't like technology I don't like computer screens and that kind of thing but getting on the newest thing could be really helpful like getting on TikTok like a month ago right or two months ago even or even now um, getting on Yelp early was a big one for me because I identified it as a good way to get business before honestly like I was like way ahead of the pack I had like 50 five-star reviews when the next person had like seven. Um, and I got a lot of work from it. But eventually more and more people understood the benefits of Yelp. Yelp got more and more aggressive with trying to make money. Um, and they started filtering out a lot of reviews. They started filtering out your page if you didn't pay. They don't admit that, but they do. I'm certain of it. Um, so there's some new stuff, new an alternative to Yelp and that would be like Google business listing um, it's confusing because it's like built into maps too but I've done a lot of that um, let's see what your question specifically was um, if you have a niche just throw it out there you know um, that's how I started shooting more political events I had a client who hired me because they want they hosted a fundraiser and then and then I expressed to that client because they had so they had a politician at their house to raise money and um, I, I told them that this is something I'm really interested in could you like can you connect me with that organization and then that organization I asked them if they could connect me to anyone else that kind of thing it's kind of like a chain right so you keep asking, like, do you know anyone? This is the kind of work I'm interested in. And for me, I, I had a hard time. I've always had a hard time doing that kind of thing. But because I actually was genuinely interested, 
and I knew it wasn't just out of, hey, I want to make more money. Can you refer me? I was able to feel very authentic about asking, like, hey, can you refer me? Do you know anyone else? That kind of thing. So I hope that helps. Approaching corporations directly. Yeah, I, I don't. It can't hurt, guys. Like, don't. There's no reason to be scared of, like, doing a cold email and saying, hey, I'm wondering if you um, could you put me in touch with the person responsible for hiring photographers or do, are you guys in need of a photographer? Here's my work. There's nothing wrong with that. I haven't done it, but I know people that do it and it works for them. So I do what I, I, I do what I do because it's in my comfort zone and I try to always expand on that, but I'm imperfect. So start with your strength and figure out what works for you initially. If you are, I think you absolutely should be able to approach people and do the cold calls or the mark. You can network on LinkedIn. You can do that. You can email people that way. Um, you could do word of mouth, but you can also just initially starting out, just embrace your strengths and say, okay, I understand I can learn SEO, but I'm shy, even though I'm a photographer and I have to interact with people, I'm still pretty shy and I'm going to build my business behind a computer. You can do that. You know, there's many ways to get the word out there. Uh, like I said, for me, I like to get the most bang for the buck. And if I don't get me wrong, it's a ton of work. Search engine optimization is crazy amounts of work. I'm still figuring it out. You know, everyone's figuring it out. It's an endless game. There, it is a job to be an SEO. That's your job. And it's not like they all, they learned everything and now they're good. They're constantly having to update what they know about search engine optimization because Google's also constantly improving and changing their algorithm. They're improving it to offer a better user experience to the viewer, which by the way is the number one thing about search engine optimization. Um, do you give your cl client or your customer or, or whatever, your audience um, value? Do you give them a reason to go to your website? And so content is king and that's number one. If you never learn anything about like keywords and that kind of thing, if you write really good content, it will show up on YouTube. Like, I'm not YouTube, but your website will begin to rank. Uh, for example, it's interesting. I often, it depends on what I'm writing. I like to write academically and I like to write conversationally depending. But when you do like it from a phone, which is different, I get different results than on my phone than I do on my computer. But if I do like event photographer or photogra event photographer Los Angeles on my cell phone, and you guys can try that out right now do a event photographer Los Angeles a lot of my articles have shown will show up there uh, my website's not showing up yet well it does but not like at number one but I usually get a interesting finds result which will have um, a few articles I've written or articles that have been written about me but one of them that shows up is a I don't remember I think it was one of my step and repeat videos and I basically wrote out a transcription I just wrote out what I said in the video and it ranked really high and I wasn't even trying on that one and I think th that conversational tone must have uh, Google likes it so um, Paval tell me if I'm saying your name right um, says hey thank you for doing this I'm trying to be a concert photographer and I'm willing to do stuff for free when is it okay to start ta talking about payment and how thank you a lot um, once you cut a deal, if you, it's very hard to say, hey, you're booking me. I'm going to give you a discount for the first time. It's very hard to claw any money back, in my opinion. So if you're going to do it for like 100 bucks the first time, you've devalued yourself. and Or if you do it free the first time, you've really devalued yourself. Um, I, so it's, that's kind of tough to talk about money in that way with a client you've already worked for, even if it was for free or discounted. If you're going to do that, I really would try to say, hey, just so you know, this is my rate, okay? I'm doing so that when they do want to talk to you about hiring you again, if they do, they'll understand in, in advance that you, what your rate is going to be so they don't have sticker shock because they're going to go from free to like, what, 200 an hour? Like, you know? Um, so 
and my overall philosophy on working for free is if they should be hiring someone and will be hiring someone if it weren't for you, don't do that for free. If you need to build a portfolio, you do not need to be um, the official photographer. You can go to concerts on your own and build a portfolio. If you have a telephoto, you don't need special access. If you have like a 70 to 200, which is something you're probably going to need if you're um, pursuing concerts. Uh, but you don't need to, um, you don't, yeah, I don't think you need to work for free. Just shoot for free for yourself. But let me know if you have a follow-up to that. All right, let's take another look. What are your rates? You guys know it. If you're just joining, I do 250 an hour, but chart, but uh, offer more service. What is included in your hourly rate? So for me, I do a pretty much all-inclusive. Uh, again, it comes down to my personality. Um, I'm, I don't want to. I, I I I like to shoot and scoot. I like it to be all inclusive. I don't want to like do a lot of back and forth. And I don't like selling, so I charge good rate and then I give you everything. And that will even include basic usage rights for like social media and all that. This is my um, opinion. This is how I do it. You will find different advice online, I promise you, but that's how I do it. Do you charge travel fees? I, I do, if it's far enough, if it's out of LA. But if it's Orange County, which if you're not familiar, it's like really close, but really far. Um, it's kind of tricky because they might just hire a different person. It depends, you have to feel it out, you know? Okay, um, I think you guys that was a sufficient answer, it sounds like. And I, am I saying your name right, Pavel? Okay, how many different shots do you take? Okay, for me, it's really important. I shoot to get to cover your event. I'm not shooting in order to provide you with a set number. I'm not trying to get to 5,000. I'm not trying to like give you a minimum either. I'm just shooting for coverage. And I try to aggressively edit down um, but give you if there's enough variation between similar images I don't I, if uh, they're really similar I edit down if I feel like there's a distinct emotional difference or something I will um, give my client all of both of them um, yeah I don't want to put the burden of calling my images on my client but I also have to consider time and like I said my current objective is having a faster turnaround time than anyone and I do that by hiring someone to do my editing day of but only at my premium rate how do you choose which images are delivered okay I have to read this one <laughs> I don't remember what I would say I make sure every image, okay, every, every image offers something unique. I do not put the burden of selecting which of two nearly identical images is best on my client. Uh, we talked about this. I know my clients do not need 10,000 mediocre images. They need images that accurately represent their brand, tell a story, and can be used in their marketing. How much editing is included? So basic retouching is included. That means exposure, color, contrast. Maybe... Um, I don't do advanced. It basically means no advanced skin retouching, no flyaway hair retouching, that kind of thing, but pretty much everything else. If you shoot it right, you don't have to edit your images very much. Um, that's a good argument for getting very technical as a photographer, not just for your client's sake, but for your own to reduce the amount of work you have to do. Um, how much do you charge for additional editing? 50 um, for basic like it's pretty standard maybe like 30 sometimes for um, your average photographer it can be 30 to 50 so like acting headshots usually are 50 if you need additional retouching formats JPEG um, edited JPEG uh, people always uh, it's, it's a common question if like what do I do if my client asks for raw files I've almost never been asked um, so are people really asking that? Is that your guys experience? Let me know. Um, if they really, really want it. I educate them on why I don't recommend it or why I wouldn't think they'd want it. Um, if, but also I listen to them. Some people have in-house editors and you know, that's fine. 
And although my, my, I don't know, I don't want to call it my ego, but I, an artist wants to control their work. And so it's not, you know, you don't love the idea of people seeing unedited work that needs to be edited. Uh, you don't like the idea of giving your work to someone else to stylize and it might not really, it might look awful. It might not represent you, you know. I can insert an ad? What does that do? I just inserted an ad? Weird. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> I think that's new. I can create a highlight video. What's that do? I can share. Cool. There's so much you can do. I'm going to share it to Facebook right now. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm like, for me, I'm like, the internet is like, I mean, the stuff we can do now is really amazing. I'm not one to um, take it for granted. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh, I can like embed a video into my live stream. Anyway, uh, I have another question. It's hard. Sometimes you really need the job, uh-huh, and also don't want to do devalue your work. 100%. I have done very cheap photography for friends and artists, although wasn't happy about the money. <sighs> yeah, I've seen, okay, so I can relate more to what you're saying, but I've noticed two things. Uh, there's some people where they're like, I've, I've hired, I've like needed a second photographer and I've asked like a photography student, um, cause I live near a university and I've like, I had a neighbor who was a photography student and they asked and I said, Hey, I need a second shooter. What's your rate? And they asked for like 200 an hour. I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> like, like, and that's what I was charging at the time. And I had been doing it for like 10 plus years. And I'm like, where do you get off? But then there's other people that really devalue themselves. And I was more like that than the other person. And a lot of it is your circumstance. If you have a corporate nine to five or just a nine to five or any type of passive income, that kind of thing, it's easier to say, this is what I'm worth. This is what I want. It's not worth it to me otherwise. And it is what it is. But when it's your income, it's really, really hard. Um, and there is the fear that you are losing, you are going to lose the job if you ask for a lot. So one thing you can do is it, it's a hard thing to navigate. You basically talk about your, um, you have to leave openings for your client where, so for example, your initial offer is like, okay, my hourly rate is 150, but it's like what I do. I say, I'll, I'll say, this is what I get. I offer for 250. I can work within your budget, but we, you know, with, with, with concessions, meaning I might not offer same day editing, that kind of thing. Um, that's one argument people have for itemizing your rates too. So that way, if people want to like, you're not devaluing yourself because like, if you're talking to a client and you say, this is my hourly rate and they say, well, I can't afford that. And they're trying to ne negotiate, um, you're, negotiating off like this ma magical number you know what i mean but if you're saying okay this is how much same day editing is this is how much that is you want it for that rate this is what you're not going to get that way you don't feel devalued i hope that made sense um well the lesson learned is if you're not happy you shouldn't do it too um just to be blunt i'm on yeah, if you're not happy, then obviously you shouldn't have done it. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. And also, you're not going to give it your all if you go to a job and then you have someone telling you. So, uh, okay. So, I have had this happen where for like a private party, I've been hired and they negotiate with me. And I need the job, maybe, maybe circumstances. And so I take it for less money, you know, less than I would have liked, but not where I was going to be bitter about taking that amount of money. And then I get to their house and it's a $20 million mansion and I get pissed. And initially I, I tell myself, I'm not going to be able to do a good job. I'm like bitter about that. 
But ultimately, I have pride in my work, and I always do a good job, and it doesn't affect me. But yeah, it doesn't make me feel good when you show up to their house and they're like living large and they're nickel and diming a, a small time. You know, I'm just a photographer. I'm a sole proprietor. I'm not like running a huge business. It, it hurts. So you have to make sure you feel good about it. But it's really hard when it's your main income. So I, I don't recommend doing what I did to people. Uh, for most people, I don't recommend diving headfirst into shooting this, shooting, uh, doing professional photography for your living. I taught when I started, but I make very little money, which uh, <laughs> G can attest to. One of my fellow teachers, uh, he's in the, I think you're still here, but yeah, we don't make a lot of money teaching. I do it more for fun. I like to, to know I'm going to make something guaranteed every month, but it's very little. Um, okay. How many, let's see if there's any other questions on my FAQ. I think I covered it. Let's see what else comes up on YouTube, or maybe I will hit up another, sorry. Not YouTube, Google. Um, event, event photographers, let's see what just comes up. Now it's going to come up with near me, Los Angeles, that kind of thing. Are event photographers near me, charge. Everything's always about money. I thought I'd come I'd find a lot of interesting questions to answer. So, we're going to have to do event photography FAQ. Let's try this woman's I'm not familiar with her. Why should you should we hire you for our wedding? Okay, well, I don't need to I'm I don't want to read her random coverage and travel. Looks like she's a wedding photographer. Do you work with the second photographer? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Allow me to explain. I spent the last almost 20 years shooting weddings as a solo photographer and have since added several extraordinarily ta talented associate photographers to the studio. They are wonderful documentary photographies and great assets to the wedding day coverage when... Okay, I'm going to answer on my own. Um, if you're shooting weddings, a second photographer isn't about just more images. It's about giving um, more per, a different perspective and capturing concurrent moments. So, for example, a first look. You have the uh, bride and groom seeing each other for the first time. If you have two photographers, one can capture the groom, one can capture the bride's perspective um, or capture her her face when they see each other for the first time so um, that's really why uh, if it's a large enough corporate event they might want a second photographer you sometimes you you can try do your best to hustle in order to cover do the job of two people you can um, but you're ne it's never going to be quite the same because you can't capture a moment from two different perspectives at once as a an individual photographer. You can run really quick. That's what I'll do if I don't have a second photographer. But it's never going to be quite the same. But if you're shooting like a conference and there's different like conferences, like different meetings, and they need you to cover at the the entire meeting or multiple meetings in its entirety, then you would need a second shooter. Do you edit all of your photographs? Uh, she does. Where do you live and how far will you travel? It's a New York photographer. Uh, wedding photographers tend to be willing to travel anywhere. Let's see if we can f find it. I don't know why that would come up for event photography FAQ. I think this guy used to be in LA. And it's interesting because his, um, he moved, but when it comes to search engine optimization stuff, it still comes up when I search in LA. How would you describe your photography? <laughs> okay, he's joking. Um, <laughs> it's really, really good. <laughs> okay. Do you have insurance? I'm terribly risk adverse, and thus I'm a proponent of excessive insurance. My studio carries two million dollars in business liability insurance. Yeah, I think mine might be a million um, in liability. Um, 
it's probably never going to get used. I'm not sure. So he's fully insured. Good call. What kind of equipment do you use? I use the best equipment in the world. For more information about my gear, check out my photography equipment page. Um, okay, let's click on that. Um, he's a Nikon person. Whatever. It's not important. Um, but maybe this looks impressive to a client. Like this wild list of gear. Pfft. I, uh, it's it's not I think it's absurd um, wow he's even getting into his computer I think it's just to be impressive you know I think that's why he did it if I were a client and I actually if you guys go to my website I have under um, resources go to mickmillman.com go to resources you can see I did a nef um, basically a guide for people hiring photographers look at the work that's what they should do look at the work not the gear Val, what would you expect from your second shooter? Um, well, I don't expect them to be as good as me, and there's not much pressure on them, you know, to be honest. Um, it's a good gig to be a second photographer. It's a good way to build a portfolio. Um, give me something more specific about what you mean. Um, uh, a good seasoned second shooter is going to know how to read your mind. They're going to know where they think. They're, they're going to know where you want them positioned without being told. Like when I was a second photographer, I, was, I could read the, my, the main photographer's brain. You know, I knew exactly what he wanted from me. Um, and be sometimes before he knew, you know. One thing, uh, the feedback I got from them a lot was that because I started out with this big studio, second shooting for one of the founders, and then one, uh, uh, one of the other main photographers would eventually start using me as well. And one of the feedback he told the main, the other guy, was that, I don't want to use their names, but uh, yeah, the kid disappears, but he comes back with all this great stuff. So I, had, I was very proactive, and so I hustled. I worked really hard. I loved what I did. I was young. I was enthusiastic, and so I hustled. And so, yeah, I didn't wait for them to tell me what to do. I was always shooting, always coming up with different ideas, like taking the elevator. Like once um, on my own, I knew I had this idea at a hotel to go all the way to the top floor and shoot the wedding from all the way above, that kind of thing. So my personal expectations, I don't know. I, I have to think about that. I mean, I, I don't have a super high standard. Um, I think attitude is more important when I'm looking to hire work ethic than your base level skill. Like, you, you, your work ethic matters more to me. Like, if you're being lazy and you're not trying, I get, I get upset. I do. Um, but I also tend to hire people um, that I have known. Uh, a lot of my second shooters started out as my photography student, actually. Alrighty, um, I'm probably going to wrap it up pretty soon. I'm going to say it now so you guys can get your questions in. No matter what, these always seem to go for about an hour and a half, even if I try to do a shorter amount. I don't really look at the time, but they always end up going for about that. What if you have an equipment failure or computer malfunction? Let's see... He is a salesman, this guy, where he's like, it's good. There's nothing wrong with that. He's making sure you feel safe with him. Um, he's got, and maybe that's why his FAQ comes up when you do a Google search. It's a lot of content. Um, but he's like basically talking about redundancy with hard drives, memory cards, computers, etc. Are you a successful photographer? That's interesting. I'm sure that by mo almost any measure, most folks would consider me a successful photographer, at least among my peers in Houston. However, in order to truly achieve success, my work uh, must con constantly evolve and improve. The goal that I've set for myself is to always be better than I was last week. And, I, and if I can continue to meet that standard, then I believe that I'll secure my future success. I agree. Um, for me, it's not just about my business uh, I try to be better and better because I love this craft and I don't want to become complacent 
you have to constantly challenge yourself, try new things, and improve as a photographer, um, if for no other reason than for yourself. Uh, Amon has a question. Do I think it's a good idea to combine artistic and professional website into one hmm, and make two separate websites? I'm struggling with this. Yeah, I did two for years. Um, I've found that I don't think being the photographer that does everything. So I'm going to show you guys. I don't think being the photographer that does everything is good. And I, I, this isn't my analogy, but it's uh, one I read once. If you you have a dandelion pr problem and you're going to the store to kill it, to buy a, a uh, like a killer for it, do you buy the one that says kills all weeds or kills all dandelions? And you tend to buy the specialized one, the one that's uh, going to do that job. Even though we know it's the same, they're probably the same thing, right? A weed killer, if it kills all weeds, will kill all weeds. But uh, most people don't want to hire a prof like a political photographer that has a bunch of like weddings on their portfolio. So that's bad. But I think I've been hired because of my professional work. If nothing else, it, it makes people remember me. So for example, I've got my photo series I do with my dog um, where people are going to be like, oh, the guy who does like the diptychs with him and his dog doing the same thing they're gonna remember it they're gonna um it's a good reason if if not by your work they'll remember you by your prof your projects uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't make it like your main thing so if you look at my website i have event photography first and foremost um, i have been experimenting with parties and family um, but I think if you go to my website, it's clear I shoot events. And if you do go to family, it's not like family portraits. It's mostly like smaller events for families. So if you look, some family portraits, but it's mixed in, right? Um, uh, then I have info. And then after that, I have like a sub menu where I have clients. And then I have actual like, so if you click on clients, I haven't updated it in a while. You have like a client list and then if you go below I have like Adobe where I just like have some of the work from shooting with Adobe I have a Nike area I don't know how you actually call this company uh, <laughs> I'm not their target market but it's, I don't know if it's TIGI I think it's TIGI um, but then I, I kind of like snuck in a personal project M and B, which is Mick and Bricks, and that's where you find it. Um, and then I have a few more things. I actually need to tweak this a bit. Um, I've been thinking about how I'm going to do that. In fact, my website needs a full overhaul. I don't know why some images, oh no, they're not the same. Sometimes images show up twice, but I, I need to do an overhaul on my website. Um, so your other question, better to have a website for me as an artist and another one for me as an event photographer. Uh, well, I guess like I might, I can only offer you my opinions. I would have to know what you as an artist, like what's your objective? Are you trying to make a living off art? Is it just a way to display your work? Um, what's your purpose behind it? You know, if you just want to have an audience of artwork you make for your own sake, you could just put that on Instagram. Like, why do you need it on your professional website would be the question. Um, if you're like me and you're just like, I'm gonna do what I want, <laughs> you can. Um, but also my creative portraiture has booked me jobs, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's booked me, I used to do like creative portraits for other creatives where people wanted photography of themselves but they wanted something like what I did with my photography with my own like the Mick and Brick series they wanted something like that for themselves obviously not the same concept but they wanted something unique and they saw mine and so they said oh this is the guy um, and other times it booked me a job because it made me more memorable if they found it I kind of hide it in my website now um, so there's nothing wrong with having like a flag raised giving a person a reason to hire you like i i am well suited to work 
with celebrities because I don't care. They're people, right? I didn't put them on my website for years because I was like, I don't give a, I don't care, you know? Like, I'm not going to put you on my website because you're a celebrity. But now I know, hey, it gets me work. And so I do it. So having something that will, you know, peacock, you know, make you stand out is a good thing. Okay, um, it's going to be last call for questions. Uh, then I've got to wrap it up. So you were saying my artistic work, our image-based art, performance, music. Hey, you know what? Why don't you shoot me an email? I'd like to take a look. Um, I'll, I'll put my email. I'd love to have a conversation with you about it. It'd be a lot easier than we can do here, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be a, a, a working, a career artist. Hmm. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, and this is only my experience, is that if you are a professional photographer, you might not be taken seriously in the art world, as ridiculous as it is. Um, you're going to be tainted with that commercial like view that people will have of you. Um, I've seen that happen to people. I saw it when I was in college. Um, when I applied to graduate school, I think that was a problem as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, I think from what I'm hearing, only from what I'm hearing right now, I would say you should separate it. Um, like I kind of... I have put on pause my own art, to be honest, because I'm trying to focus on my business so that I can focus on my art. I need to get all my um, ducks in a row with my art, I mean my business, so that I don't have to worry about money, right? It's important. Like, if you have a hierarchy of needs, and if you're worried about money, it's really hard to create. And so for me, um, but at the same time, you have to create when you're worrying about things, but it makes it really hard. It's a weird double-edged sword but I would say that um, yeah for me I put it on pause and I have a lot of aspirations and project ideas that I, I, I currently have on pause as I'm building my business out even more I am doing YouTube which is like a whole other thing that has taken a lot of time and energy you know you have partners on your page do you just put them there because you worked for them or have to ask them um i've never asked you're talking about like the if i look at the um clients and i have their logo i don't have to ask permission really to to put who i've worked for i don't think um it, that actually never occurred to me that i would need to you know Um, yeah. All right. I think that will do it. Uh, again, thank you guys all for watching. Um, if you guys want to check out more of my work, you can check out mickmillman.com. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about event photography, I have resources on that page. I also have my channel, of course. I have an event photography playlist. If you go to my website and you go to resources, you can um, check out a whole event photography resource page that I've created, which basically includes, um, it includes my videos. I'm gonna actually put that in the uh, comments. It includes my videos. It, it's a, it has a little blurb about each of them so you know exactly what they're about. And that way I can save you some time if you don't wanna sit and watch every single video I've ever made. So let me link that. Um, as always, I do, uh, I do try to be accessible to everyone. Um, so if you want to email me, I will get it back. I will get right back to you. Unfortunately, um, a couple of you have emailed me recently, and I, I got a little bit behind yesterday, and I will get back to you soon. Uh, if you're interested in having your work critiqued, let me know. Um, I'm opening that up first to the people that support me on Patreon because um, I have to try to, like, control that a little bit so I don't get too many people asking me all at once but yeah
I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, I can't. I if not tomorrow, next week I will do the one on marketing. So if you're new to the channel, uh, make sure you subscribe. But five days a week, I'm do I'm streaming at 10:15 a.m. Pacific time. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.